Welcome to Serverless Expeditions, Sarah. Glad to be here, Martin. So a few months ago, you showed our team a really cool way of designing user interfaces as a group. I think your process could help many viewers as they design their applications. Happy to share. So what was the problem you were trying to solve? I need a way to stay on top of YouTube comments. We have published over a hundred episodes of Serverless Expeditions, and I would see when viewers make new comments, even on old videos, so I can respond to them. Have you tried to build this before? Uh, yeah, we did. A few years ago, we started building the backend. And how did that go? Well, we got stuck. Uh, it's hard to design a backend when you don't have a list of requirements. Uh, and then you told me about the designing the user interface as a group, and that would sort of suss out the requirements. I remember asking you, if you could wave a magic wand, what do you wish you would have? And you said that you wanted a way to stay on top of YouTube comments. And I said, that is your North Star and that everything else should follow. And that's when I proposed the double diamond technique. It's something that I learned from UX grad school. And it was popularized by the British Design Council. And it's a two-step process. First, you need to figure out, are you solving the right problem? And then you can figure out, are you solving it in the right way? So in other words, you need to figure out what you really need first before you start implementing your code for it. I was excited about that because it would help me get this project moving again. Now, what was the first step? Yeah, the first step was figuring out what your real use cases were. Like what were your actual tasks? And what were the minimum set of features required to achieve those tasks? Right, right. You, me, and the other team members discussed the problem in the discover phase, and we had lots of divergent ideas, and we then went into the explore define phase, uh, where we converged on our thoughts and refined them into three use cases. And if I recall correctly, a lot of the features didn't really support that North Star, and I kept stressing, go minimalistic. We can always add more on later. And then we entered the next phase, which is the design and test phase, where we iterate on different design approaches. And then of course, we're going to diverge again because no one has opinions like UX opinions <laughs> because everyone is an expert in their own you know, experience. So the thing with the UX is how do you solve for that lowest common denominator, that baseline set of experiences? Right, and you took us through that mob user interface process. Uh, you've used that one before? Yep. I uh, learned it at Silicon Valley CoCamp, and it works very, very well for projects that don't have a dedicated UX engineer. So I also used it to teach a college level course. For this particular software engineering course, the students had to build an app, but I only had one hour in the entire semester to teach UI and UX uh, techniques. And so in that case, this technique uh, worked extremely well. Cool. Uh, I actually didn't know you picked it up from Silicon Valley Code Camp. Uh, all right. So uh, would you lay out the process for us? Sure. So everyone draws for five minutes their uh, UX design. And then you spend about 10 minutes comparing designs. And everyone shares their ideas. Then you do another round. But this time, you must include one item from every other person or at least one other person. And then you spend 10 minutes going around showing what you came up with but also you have to indicate, I got this idea from so-and-so. And you repeat this about another three times. And what will happen is you actually converge into a single design. Yeah, I remember when you set the four of us down in a conference room and we did this exercise. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we did uh, three iterations, right? Yep, we did three iterations. And here are the drawings from iteration one. And you can tell that they are quite different from one another. Right. We each had our own ideas about how to implement the use cases. Yeah. And then here are the drawings for iteration two. You can kind of start to see how they're converging. And you'd see this common theme appearing, a list of videos. Yep. Yep. We each took the best ideas we've seen from the sketches made by others. Yeah. And here are the drawings from iteration three, where you see the UI is getting more streamlined and more of a focus on that list of videos. And then we felt that things were getting pretty similar and this was a good time to stop. And so now the orange side of the double diamond is done. And we could have done a traditional UX approach, research, prototype, and iterate. Nothing wrong with taking the uh, traditional approach. But in this case, when we didn't have a dedicated UX engineer, this approach worked extremely well. I agree with that. 
So that was the end of the workshop, if I remember correctly. And the week after, I took those sketches from Iteration 3 and I created a simple mock-up in HTML. Yep, we discussed the mock-up as a group. And I remember we removed some buttons and get the basic stuff working first. Yeah, I remember you kept pushing us, Sarah. You kept asking, do we really need that button? Yep, I'm a minimalist. And the idea is that you're going to learn from the first version of the app. It's always more fun and rewarding to add more functionality than it is to take functionality away, both mm. from the code base and from the users. Yes. So that was a fun and useful exercise. Uh, we got the project restarted after a year of no movement. Uh, thanks for showing us the way, Sarah. Happy to have helped. The next step was to create a technical architecture. That will be the next video. But for now, thank you everyone for watching. If you have any questions for Sarah or me, please leave them in comments. We read them all, especially now that we have a good comment tool. Also, let us know if you have any suggestions for serverless topics in future episodes. See you in the next video where we design the technical architecture.